That bio was way too long, so I apologize about that. <laughs> it's uh, great to be here today and to talk about this topic of diversity, and it's an exciting topic for me. But before we begin on that topic, a lot of people ask me, so James, what is the secret to success? There's not one person that doesn't want to know that. They all want to know, what is the secret to success, whether it's business or in life? And I don't have it 100% figured out. However, one thing that I know is an absolute common denominator to succeeding is managing dynamic changes. In the startup world that we're in or I'm in, if you cannot change your business model 25 times or your features 100 times, then you're not actually going with the movement of the market. So change is something that is very difficult to manage. If you think about our human nature, we don't like to change. We put on one shoe before the other all the time. When you sit in a classroom or a boardroom, you end up sitting in the same chair all the time. We don't like change, and there's a reason for that. Now, the world is changing today. I mean, I look around the room today, and we see, um, I'm sorry, how old are you guys? What grade are you guys in? <laughs> so just speak up. Like high school? Junior high? What grade are you in? Second year in high school? Wow. Secondary school. Secondary school. All the way to, I'm not going to pick on those person, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, change is happening here. You, you can never imagine that we would have a conference in the you know, fintech and financial world, and we're talking about diversity. So let's talk about change a little bit, but before we go there, I want to tell you a little story. So I know this gentleman, his name is Satoshi Nakajima, and he was the architect of Windows 95. I'm from Seattle and Los Angeles, so I know a lot of Microsoft guys. And he was there, and he's very, very famous now in Japan for architecting one of the best software programs at the time, which was 95. And after he left Microsoft, he left with like $300 million, mm -hmm. and he wanted to actually do a startup. And so he pitched a venture capital firm, I won't mention the name of it, and it was him and another company and another company. So there are three companies that were pitching this VC firm. They're all at about the same stage in the product development and in the business model. Now, Satoshi Nakajima is Japanese American. He does have a little bit of an accent when he speaks English. The other two companies were run by Caucasian folks in America that had no accent. So we think there should be no hidden bias and it doesn't exist, right? Even at this level, at a venture capital level, where we're talking about real hard dollars, there shouldn't be, and we wouldn't expect, a hidden bias to actually affect the formula of success of one of these ventures. So he gives the presentation. They offer him a term sheet. They said, we will invest in your company and we will value you at a pre-money of $6 million. Not bad for where he's at, for $6 million. They said, we'll give you $2.5 million at a $6 million valuation. Fantastic. Second company presents. They get a $15 million valuation. So the VC says, we will give you $5 million at a $15 million pre-money valuation. Third company, $19 million. So Satoshi Nakajima, after he found this out later, by the way, analyzed why this was happening. He asked the other founders exactly what stage they were at, what was different about their company versus his. They're all enterprise software. And I know there's a lot of different factors that go into this valuation model, but he re recognized and realized it was because he was Japanese American and he couldn't present with such enthusiasm and in such salesmanship. The Japanese culture presents in a different way. He's more about the data. He's, he's kind of a coder, so he just looks at his computer while he's presenting. And so that completely impacted his ability to get a higher valuation. In the VC world, not to pick on them too much, less than 3.5% of billions of dollars are going to female CEOs. That's a problem. There's a lot more female entrepreneurs than 3%. 
but less than three and a half percent of venture funding is going to female CEOs. So we have to recognize that we've come a long ways, but we still have a lot more to go. And when the industries like yours could understand that, and we could actually have these conversations, then I think we start seeing a little bit of a change. So let's talk about this concept of change a little bit. The changing face of the consumer. Globalization effect on diversity. As we look, at, look in this room, none of us are probably from the same background. We come from different countries, different cultures, different families, and we bring something to society and our own companies in the dynamics, and we're not all the same. It used to be where we started thinking about the consumer and diversity very separately. So my contention today and my argument today is because of globalization, if you're not paying attention to diversity, you're actually going to be behind. The world is changing and basically your companies will be behind if your executives are not looking at it this way. And we're going to dive deep into this. So it's not just a very high level thing we're talking about. We'll dive very deep. But I'm telling you that if companies do not embrace this as a strategic investment and as an offensive weapon, the companies will be behind. 